Hey, hey, welcome to another fun, exciting episode of Business Growth Time. Today, we've got Kent Levi with us, and we're going to talk all things website. But before we introduce Kent, say hello to my good friend, Janet E. Johnson, where today the E is going to stand for Exciterama. <laughs> <laughs> You just use that because you've already used exciting. <laughs> That's right. And then sometimes, let's be honest, you're not all that exciting. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> so today we're excited, Rama. Okay. And then we're excited, Rama. Uh, do you guys have that? We have uh, we have Auto Rama that comes to the the big where they normally do the big car show, the auto show every year. Mm -hmm. About a month later, they bring in. Autorama and it's all these hot rod cars. Now I live in the Motor City, right? So I would understand yeah. if it wasn't like national or tra uh, going into other places. But it is a cool. Like if you chopped your car or you got a street rod or something, Autorama is the place. Mm. When I you said Rama, it reminded me of Banana Rama. Do you remember that age? Oh, oh it's, it's <laughs> a cruel summer kind of joke, right there. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so. Kent, hi. Yes, hi. How are Welcome. you? Welcome. Good. Thank you for having me. I'm yeah, fun. Well, I will give you the proper introduction, and then okay. we will start uh, drilling you away with questions about sure. websites. Sure. Um, Kent Levi, CEO and founder of Levi Marketing, Levi Websites, Levi Hosting, and Levi Domains, has built his company from the ground up for 12 years now with a passion for helping clients grow to their fullest potential. Kent has helped build, build a team of over 40 people that specialize in creating premium, effective websites that drive results, sales, and brand reputation that translates into significant ROI for his clients. So once again, welcome, Kent. Appreciate Hi. you coming on. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. So you do a lot with websites, obviously. Yes. And, yes, that's my world. So Terry, let's let you start. What are your driving questions about websites? Well, I like the fact that you're kind of taking over that one-stop shop thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're doing the development and I assume you're doing the design and you're uh -huh. hosting the site and then you're hosting the domain. Yep. Was there a, was that sequential or did you just be like, man, we're going to own all of this at once? No. So actually, you know, Levi Marketing is the primary company, sort of like the parent company where it all started from in the beginning. And originally we didn't do websites. It was mainly just the online marketing portion, sort of what, uh, 2006, seven, eight, when it all really started to really take off. So you had like social media marketing and SEO and it was all fresh and new for a lot of people, the internet marketing. And uh, so that was our primary focus and it just sort of evolved over the years. Um, I realized that, you know, I was, uh, the clients that I was getting was saying, hey, that's great, you know, you can get clients for me or, you know, start to build this engagement, but we sort of need a, a website first, you know, we, so I was, I was, you know, the, the horse before the carriage type of thing. So I was, you know, I realized, well, hey, you know, after a couple of years, it sort of hit me, we really need to start getting into websites. And then it became where the website portion wound up being the core of our company and where I really wanted to focus in on. And so everything that we do is based or hinged off of the website as the core. So when we do the marketing now, it's all uh, driving traffic to specifically to the website and then converting them into customers. So that's the only uh, like hyper-focused ROI that we do for online marketing. Uh, but yeah, everything we do is custom website de design and development. Um, I have a team of over 40 people now that are just amazing. And, you know, I'm really specific on who I pick for my team. And uh, yeah, you know, my primary focus is to help clients. And so it just spawned off of that. I figured, uh, you know, in about six, seven, eight years ago, um, clients were saying, hey, you know, we were building it sort of the next step. The clients were saying, hey, we were building them a website and saying, okay, where do we get this hosted now that you built this website for us? So I had the brainiac idea of, okay, let's create a hosting company and then let's do the, add the domains and everything else, security. So it all just sort of evolved over the years. And now I've just, you know, like I said, everything's uh, centered or focused off uh, the core of the company is based off of the website itself. So anything related to websites, um, like, you know, the domains, hosting, design, creation, management, everything uh, is where my, the focus of the company is. So I try not to steer away from that now. Very, very cool. Yeah. I always look at websites from the perspective of you have form or you have function, right? It either looks really good or it mm -hmm. does really cool stuff. Yeah. It sounds like when you said, oh, we have designers and developers. That Two totally different worlds, yeah. 
but are you playing in both spaces equally or do you have more of a focus on one side or the other? Honestly, I would say more development, the functionality, and I'll tell you why, because you can have the most beautiful website in the world, uh, but if it's not working or online or people can't access it or purchase or, you know, access a form or something like that, it's doing nobody any good. So what separates us from everybody else in the industry is we're, uh, not to brag, but we're in the top 1% uh, in the industry for this. And it's it's specifically because we do what's known as 100% clean coding, uh, which simply means it's a tech term that just means we build things correctly to begin with, which is extremely rare in this industry. Um, but it's I do it because, mm -hmm. you know, I learned through the years that, uh, you know, I want when I create a website for a client or we create a website for a client that it's going to last them a long time, three, four, five, six years. And that only happens when it's it's built correctly to begin with, sort of like a house. Uh, where, you know, if you build that, you could, I was telling Janet the other day, you can have two houses that look identical on the outside and inside, but one house was built correctly and the other house was just slapped together overnight pretty much. So one house is going to last you forever and the other one's only going to last you a couple of years before it starts breaking down. So same thing with websites. So we build things correctly to begin with. So when they want to add on to it um, or the most important piece is they don't have to worry about uh, bugs or issues or glitches or they can sleep at night knowing their customers aren't going to have any issues on the website so that's the most important piece so you're saying that you're when you say clean code are you building these from scratch or typically they can, yes. okay so you're I'd not say doing Joomla or wordpress as much so we do use those platforms we'll use like premium wordpress or if it's a hyper e-commerce site we'll use magento 2.0 or Lever or h straight html or whatever you know the client specifically is looking for but we are uh, at least 95% of our sites were custom design and development, everything. Um, and it just makes sense. We're not throwing a ton of like plugins or things together and hoping that it's going to work like most uh, companies I find do because it can lead to a lot of issues and bugs down the road. So yeah, it just makes sense long-term for the client typically. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. I, and I get what you're saying. Believe me, yeah. I think I've had all that happen to me. <laughs> you know, on, the, on the flip side of it too, though, is the design portion. So um, we are, you know, I, I love a beautiful website in that sense too. So we are hyper-focused again, not just on development, but also on the design. But I'm not so much focused on, oh, this is a pretty website. I'm more focused on how many of these visitors are going to turn into customers. You know, so I'm hyper-focused on the conversion rate of the website. Like, how is their strong call to actions? Is it easy to find their contact information? Is it easy to purchase? How many times do they have to click to get to where they want? You know, so that's what I'm focused on more in the design portion. Um, I'm more what's known as a solutions architect, and I try to figure out, okay, for each company is very specific in their needs of what they, you know, what they offer and uh, what they need for their specific website. So what we do in the design process is try to figure out, okay, what does this business specifically need for their website to get the, the highest amount of conversion rate, you know, from the turning those visitors into customers. So that's where we focus on our, uh, for design portion. I think that's extremely important when it, you know when somebody's looking to design a new website um, to be hyper focused not so much oh this is a pretty website but um, is this going to be effective in, in turning all this traffic into actual people purchasing or contacting you so well i'd say that's the main reason for building a website you know i mean yeah. that's that that's the reason people get in have to have a website in the first place the end all goal is yep. to make sales and make money from that website. Sure. Um, but it's interesting how people still to this day can think that you build the website and, and they will come. They will just go up. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> but it's just the, you know, you got to have that first, but that's just the first yeah. step. Yeah. You know, it's like two sides of the same coin. It's like you, you got to make sure you have an effective website so that when you can start driving, then drive traffic to the website afterwards uh, and then convert those visitors into customers. But yeah, I mean, it's only the first step. It's not the only step, by, you know, at all. Okay, it's probably right. just first of many steps, you know, because not like what you do is uh, not only do you have to drive traffic to the, you know, even if you convert those cu or, uh, visitors into buyers, that you have to keep them engaged and you have to, you know, build that community on the back end. And so there's many steps down the road in the long uh, the lifetime of the customers that, you know, you have to be focused on. It's not just a one-off type of thing where they purchase from you once or they just visit your site once and, you know, that's it. You have to keep them engaged and, uh, you know, keep them for the life of that, you know, that customer. And I think that's, you know, so the website's just the first, I'm just the initial piece for customers and say, here you go. You know, this is, I got you set up correctly now. Let's go, you know, let's move on to the next step. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yep. Yep. Exactly. How iterative are you in your process? I know some web developers get kind of a scope, put it together, then they go off for days, weeks, months, and never yeah. really talk to the customer again. And I know sure. Agile's come about where it's really yeah. kind of, you know, here's a card, we're going to work on this for a week, we're going to build this out, we're going to show the customers, see what feedback they have. So they're really mm -hmm. involved in the development process. Where do you, where do you fit in that? So, you know, throughout the project, what we do is I do what's known as a discovery phase. So that's the very first thing we do off the bat in a project where, uh, you know, so many companies in this industry, unfortunately, what they do is they just say, okay, tell us what you're looking for. Okay, great. Here's a quote. And they don't really uh, dive deep into figuring out exactly what the, what the client's looking for. And um, we do, we really uh, hash that out because we learn. I learned early on that if you don't, you know, they're going to keep on wanting revisions until the end of time. Like, oh, that looks good or that looks good or let's try this or no, let's tweak this. And that can go on for years. <laughs> um, it could go, you know, so what we try to do, and it's still going to happen always when you, you know, finish the project, they may have little tweaks, but it's trying to minimize that as much as possible. So that's why we do that preliminary phase, the discovery phase of trying to figure, figuring out, okay, why is it that you want a website? What is this going to do for you? Like you, them specifically like them as a company and them as the owner and uh, try to figure that out so that we can build a site and put it on paper. So like a house again, analogy where we're building those blueprints. And so we're both literally on the same page of what we both want. And then afterwards, after the project's been built, you know, hopefully it's exactly what they've been looking for and what they envisioned and hoped. Uh, but that's why we, we break it out. Depends on how large the project is. Sometimes we'll do like break it out into phases or milestones so that we can say, okay, here's the first launch of design. Um, and so, okay, is this the design you're looking for? So we don't even go to build the website until they've actually seen it on design. So they know exactly what it's going to look like before we even go to build it. That's why the, we, do, we break it up into sections or phases throughout the project because I think that's so critically important. You can't just say, ta-da, and like, you know, hope that, you know, they like it or something like that. Uh, and I think that's what a lot of companies do, unfortunately, is they just, you know, say reveal because they think you can't always, I was telling Janet this the other day, you can't necessarily always be like the doctor and prescribe things, even though you think you might know what they need. Uh, ultimately, the client is the client. And so you have to make sure to, uh, you know, uh, take both of what you think they need and what, what they want, you know, and so try to incorporate those things into it. So you have to, it's not you have to be both hyper focused on the client themselves, but also focused on like how, uh, you know, what things are required to help them in the long term and try to uh, encompass both of those. So I'm not sure if that answered your question, but yeah. Yeah, it did. Right. So okay. you'll actually build out the UI UX, make sure that they're comfortable with how that's going to look and feel yep. and how their customers are going to interact with it before yep. you even start writing a line of code. Correct. Exactly. And it, it just makes a lot of sense because, you know, there can be, a, uh, it, it takes two seconds to uh, make those changes on the designs. But once you've built the house, you know, it's, it's sort of like, okay, we built you a house. Well, let's move the kitchen over here. Well, you sort of can't do that when you built a, a website from scratch. So that's why we do the design phase because it takes two seconds to, you know, change it on designs. And then once they've signed off and approved it and said, yep, this is perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. That's when we go to build. Yeah. Hmm. So we were talking about, um, I was talking about the other day with, uh, actually I did a Facebook live talking about it, uh, building your brand. I think this is my new saying, build, don't build your brand on one piece of land. Uh, so basically what do you say to people when they come to you and go, well, you know, maybe I don't need a website for a while because I'm just going to have a Facebook page. Have you okay. had that before? You know, uh <laughs> No, typically most, most of the clients that I run to realize that they have to have it all. They have to have all the different pieces in place. Um, you know, I, mo like I was telling you, most of the clients I've had have been in business 10, 20, 30 years for the most part, I'd say like 90% of them. Um, and you know, they've been there, done that. It's like, you know, I, I sometimes get the clients where they're just starting off where, you know, I want to help them and they, they don't necessarily know exactly what they're getting into. They know their business really well, but they don't necessarily know any of the other parts of it, like the website or marketing or things like that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, typically, and that's one of the first things, like I was telling you the other day is that, 
uh, I really go through a vetting process with my clients. I think it's, it's important, mm -hmm. at least for me, because um, I have to make sure that they're willing to let go of the reins uh, of, you know, being able to say, you know, I'll find out first what they're looking for, what's really important to them as a person, like, okay, what they envision, what they dream to have happen as an end goal, because that's extremely important. Um, they're the client that, you know, I want to make sure we're fulfilling those dreams that they have or what they're envisioning. Um, but at the same time, I need to make sure that they're willing to uh, sort of trust in me and, and what's the most effective, you know? And so if, if I can, if I get the feel that they're really like going to be micromanaging every little detail and trying to like of everything, you know, it probably won't be a good fit long-term and it just, so I have to be able to uh, do that vetting process of saying, okay, you, you know, you need a lot of things. It's not just the website. You need all the different pieces in place. And not every business is the same. Some people need, you know, Facebook. Some people don't, you know, necessarily. Uh, or I just, you know, like Pinterest or Twitter. You know, it just depends on what type of business uh, they specifically need or what, you know, what uh, channels they need to be marketing on. So every company is different that way. But trusting in me in the sense of knowing you need all those different areas. It's not just, you know, if they want to do one thing or, you know, but ultimately if they, you know, like in your example, if they say, Hey, I just want to start off with the Facebook page. I've actually, I think I had that once and uh, they do. And I let them, you know, they just, they do their thing. And when they're ready, then they contact me. But um, you know, you sort of have to be ready at that point or they have to be ready to let go of the reins. And when they're at, when they're at that point of saying, okay, I'm going to trust in you go, you know, whatever you recommend. I'm going to, cause you know, that they need to be focused on what they do extremely well in their business, whatever that is. And they can't be distracted necessarily on the marketing piece or making sure the website's working or, you know, any of those millions of things. And so that's, you know, I sort of do all the heavy lifting for them and it makes a world of difference. So, you know, when they're ready to let go, that's, that's, you know, when we sort of engage and start the relationship. So what happens if you get the sense that they're not ready to let go? Have you had <laughs> control freak customers and do you in the beginning? Them? Sure. Yeah. I mean, and you sort of have to be confident enough or comfortable enough to say no and say in a nice way, you know, you have to say, I don't think this is going to be a good fit or, you know, however, you, you know, say it in a way that's uh, professional, but at the same time, it's like, I don't think I'm going to be a good fit to you long term, you know, and it's, it's honestly, you just have to be, and you sort of have to do that because if you don't, it's going to bite you in the long run, you know, it's going to come down to where, um, you know, they're calling you at all out, you know, they think that they can call you all day, every day and, you know, make all these changes and all this stuff and not have to pay for it or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. But, um, you know, they, they're sort of disrespecting your time or abusing your time. Now I do have clients where sometimes they are like that. They're a large enough company where there's a lot, a lot of things going on and a lot of different people, like, um, there's a board that they have to adhere to. And there's a lot of like the board of directors have different, uh, or even the, the executives, I should say, have a lot of different opinions, which happens a lot in some of the clients. And so they have different opinions where they want to change things around, but they're glad to pay for the time for us to make those changes, the revisions or whatever needs to be done. Um, so that's a totally different sort of caliber, I should say, of clients where, you know, they're willing to pay for that time because they realize they're, that they want to see those different revisions so they can have a, a different viewpoint on each of those versions that we submit to them. So, you know, that happens every once in a while, but to me, that's not so much uh, micromanaging, as, micromanaging as much as it is just trying to see all the different options out there and they're, you know, they're willing to pay for, okay, let's try this or let's try that and see what works best. So those are, I get those clients sometime and I'm, I love working with those clients too. So it just depends, you know, the type of uh, control that they're willing or trust, you know, trust and control that they're willing to let go of and, uh, you know, trust in me that saying, okay, here's what I recommend. Because a lot of times these clients, they may think they know what they want, but they don't know what works. And that's, that can be uh, mm -hmm. trouble. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so you have to be confident enough to, to say that, uh, you know, I don't think this is going to be a good fit long term. And rarely do I, I mean, I do run into that sometimes where I have to say no to clients uh, off the bat, you know, or once I get that feeling, but um, most of the time, once they get the sense of, I know what I'm doing, you know, like I'm, I've, it's the same thing pretty much on uh, almost every type of business, rinse and repeat, that they, they get that sense. They've talked to other clients of mine, like references and referrals and seen my work and stuff like that, where they get that, hey, you know, you clearly know what you're doing here, go. And, and it makes things a lot easier. So, yeah. Hmm. 
So take us back 12 years ago. Today you're sitting there with 40 employees. Was there a period of time when you were the guy doing the websites and, and it built and then you hired a first person and grew like that? Or how did that grow? Um, yeah, you know, it was mainly serendipity. I just, one thing after another, just led into things. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I just took one step at a time on everything. I was doing everything myself. I was just a one man shop and I was doing, you know, getting themes and tweaking and like messing up a million times. People, you know, I was telling Janet this the other day, it's like, uh, you know, people say, how are you so smart and know all these things? It's like, cause I've messed up a million um, times. Uh, yeah. Well, Failing. I messed up. So I mess up once really bad because I don't know what I'm doing originally. And then I'm like, oh, now I know. So I, I, the, the key is to make sure you never repeat that mistake again. It's not having that mm -hmm. mistake. It's making sure that, uh, you know, so you learn, you know, and that's the thing. So, um, but yeah, you know, I started off doing it myself and uh, it just grew from there. I wound up growing, outgrowing myself where I couldn't do it myself anymore. And that big, that hire was the, the first hire was the big one. And that was really tough. And then the second and then the third and just kept growing from there. But it really, I just, you know, uh, Bill Gates uh, really influenced me here where yeah, I think he said something like, don't grow bigger than the need calls for it, the room calls for it. And so, uh, you know, I, I, when the need calls for it, like, okay, I need a VA or I need a designer or I need a project manager. Like now's the time when I need them. That's when I really, you know, I can do my due diligence in advance of like, uh, interviewing people, things like that. But when I go to actually hire somebody that, um, I don't do that until the need actually arises. And so I think I, I didn't try to grow too fast. And I think that's really important. Um, you just have to make sure to do it. We'll take it one step at a time. And when, when that need presents itself is when you really start to take action, but you know, you do have to do your due diligence and be ready. You can't just be like, okay, now all of a sudden I need to start looking for project managers or, you know, something like that. You have to actually be, I've learned to be ready now. So, yeah. So was the first hire a designer, a developer, a project manager, somebody that I think takes it was a virtual assistant, honestly, I, I, I oh. love I love the process of creating uh, the websites. And so I tried to hold on to that as long as I could, but then it got to a point where it was like, I just couldn't, it was driving me nuts, you know? So I'm a two year old with a two second attention span just to put that out there. So, um, you know, I, I'm great at the, great at the, the creation and the big picture and all that. But when it comes to like administrative or technical details, uh, I don't do well at all at that. So I learned to, uh, you know, uh, with a do your best and outsource the rest type of thing, you know, just like uh, delegate the rest. And so that's, that's pretty much what I did. Um, I just as, and now pretty much all I do is sales for the most part. I just make sure uh, you know, clients are happy that, you know, so everything else is pretty much all delegated now. Um, I have people in place for almost every position and it just works really well. People that are a million times smarter than I am at a lot of these things. And so it just works out pretty good. That's cool. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about your hosting before sure. we finish yeah. wrap up. So tell me, uh, yeah, obviously I moved over to Le to Kent's hosting. It's called Lead yep. My Hosting and uh, was with Bluehost. But what, what would you say are some of the differences? What makes you different from all those other ones that are out there? The GoDaddy domains that yep. people are just kind of used to. So, you know, it really goes down to the quality of the service that you're getting, um, I think. Because, you know, you can have Bluehost or any of them, really. And say you have an issue and you go to call them at their number and you have to wait forever to finally get in touch with somebody. And they're saying, you know, they can only do so much or they can't do what you're asking them to. Or, you know, you don't understand. You're not tech savvy enough in the, to understand a lot of what's going on or tr how to fix it in yourself. And, you know, they're limited to what they can do a lot of times. So it becomes extremely frustrating uh, of, you know, sometimes you, you run into things and um, it can't be fixed without it, like a developer or something like that. And for most people, they can't hire a developer full time, you know, for their company. Uh, and so it, it leaves them in a, a very tight spot. And with us, um, we have a 24-7, uh, 365 dedicated tech call center that you can call at any time, and we're there. We're always there. Um, you know, if you need to call me for any reason, I'm all, you, you know, you'll have my cell phone, and you can say, Kent, I need help with something, and can you, you know, make sure this person can knock this out for me. We offer website maintenance services, uh, management services, like if you want updates to your site every month, we offer those services. Um, if you want to make sure that we're, your site's always online, we offer those services. Um, we have a 24-7 uptime uh, monitoring that we offer. We have security, like full security, full malware scans. 
Um, there's just so many things that goes on outside, like part of the website, but not like the um, people think once their website's created that, you know, okay, now it's, you know, done. And I'm like, you know, I mean, there's a million, that's what IT companies, you know, like make a gazillion off of because most people don't realize a lot of times, unless you're a larger company, uh, that there's so many things that goes on once your website's live. Um, you know, is your website always online? Can people always like, you know, fill out the forms and do what they need to? Has somebody hacked your website? Is there malware? You know, that's not even the malware scans. There's new malware scans that you have to do for cryptocurrencies, which is uh, a new thing that just came out uh, that I realized uh, recently, but it came out last year, it seems, where no longer is uh, the normal malware scans working, where you have to have new malware scans that specifically scan for cryptocurrency malware, which means um, it's not going to, they don't care about other people's money or computers. It's not going to infect the visitor's website to your computer. Um, it's just going to, it's sucking up all the CPU resources. So it slows down the website to a halt and you have no clue because it's not going to be flagged on normal malware scans. Um, and so that's a huge thing that especially in 2018 that you're going to see, um, that's going to be like crazy. I mean, it's just going to grow like really large, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, we have scans for that, but that's just one of a million examples of, uh, I, I care a lot about my, all my clients. You know, I have over 300 uh, customers now in the Levi hosting portion. We're just starting to, we're just starting to grow. My goal is 10,000, getting to 10,000 customers. And, and you know, not everybody might be able to afford, you know, our services for the website. Like I was saying, the website design development, like creating a new website for you. Uh, but, you know, every business owner has a website typically or should. And, you know, $15 a month or whatever it winds up being, uh, you know, our, the value that we provide, I think, is night and day compared to anybody else. I mean, uh, I, you know, we're always there for you. We're always going to make sure you're taken care of. If you have questions about emails or domains or whatever, you know, I'm going to give you a straight answer and tell you everything that you need to know and equip you so that you can make them the best informed decisions, uh, but also take care of you on whatever you're needing to. So, um, I think that makes a, uh, nobody else does that I've ever seen. So that's one of the reasons I actually, um, and more this year, 2018, more focused on the actual hosting portion, like the hosting and domains and everything. Um, and really trying to grow that more than the actual websites, uh, this year, because I think, um, like I said, there's so many people that, uh, they, you know, they're a business owner, they have a website, um, but the, you know, they may have it on Bluehost or network solutions or wherever, and, uh, they have no clue. You know, one of the biggest, the first things I tell them, um, not to ramble on, but one of the first things that I tell them is, uh, you're probably on a shared hosting, uh, environment, which is one of the most dangerous things you can be on. You're probably paying anywhere from five, 10, 15, whatever a month. And uh, you're on with like 500 other websites uh, on the same server. And that can be porn sites, that can be drug sites, that can be anything. And when Google's looking at your, your IP address or the, the hosting server that you're on, and if it's any of those other sites around there, they're actually correlating your site with one of theirs. And that's, it's so dangerous to do that. And most people have no clue. They, they have, they've never heard that before. And I'm just like, Yes. Um, you know, it's called IP neighbor. So you can see all the different type of websites that are on your same wow. server. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, and that's so what we do is more I'm, we're hyper focused on uh, getting you on your own environment, whether it's just, you know, if, if you need to go on a VPS, but we have like, if you're on WordPress, we have fully managed WordPress, and you're going to be on with like a max of 15 other uh, people and I know them all because they're all my clients. So, um, you know, you're, you're going to be with good uh, other good people that you don't have to worry about your site getting flagged because somebody else was doing something they shouldn't have on their site and then it correlated with yours type of thing. So I it hurts know. your rankings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many things, even with SEO, it, re it reflects com completely on Google sure. uh, for rankings and people have no idea about this stuff. So, so did you yeah. run out space in a data center somewhere and you have a rack or a cage where you're putting your customers or have you built your own? I, well, I actually partnered with another company and I'm working through them. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's Levi hosting or whatever, but it's, it's working under their, all their servers and everything. So it's sort of like a collective group and then, yeah. And then we just work together to, uh, they're just wonderful though. But yeah, that's, it's, that's how it's, it's operating currently. Because that, that infrastructure gets expensive. 
Yeah, I mean, it gets crazy. There's 200, over 200 data centers now. And so like we have CDNs. So like if, uh, you know, I put a lot of my clients on a CDN, which is content delivery network for 20 bucks a month, uh, your site will load almost instantly from anywhere. So if you're, you know, if you're, if you're in, let's say, Illinois or whatever, or Michigan, or, and, you know, you have a visitor in Florida, instead of them having to go all the way to wherever the data center is and back, um, the, it'll automatically recognize that that person's in Florida and load directly from the servers there in Florida. So they don't have to wait that extra few seconds. It will just load instantly. So things like that. So that it makes a world of difference. So we offer what I view as one of the highest quality uh, services like uh, products, the servers, the CDNs, um, for very low prices, you know, we offer very, uh, competitive prices. So, yeah. Nice. And, and, uh, people, what's the name of the website so we can, so our oh, sure. Knows. It's really easy. Levi hosting.com L E V I just like the jeans, Levi hosting.com. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm always around. You can go to my website too. Levi marketing.co is the primary website. And from there you can always reach me. Uh, the levihosting.com, we have it set to scale, so you couldn't necessarily find my information on there. It's more like a, like we could have 10,000 customers in one day and be able to handle it because of the way it's set up. Uh, but um, if you're trying to say, you know, we offer free website and domain uh, migrations, like transfers and everything too, which most people don't do. Um, and so, you know, if you're like, most companies will have to charge you, you have to hire a developer to go do that. And it costs you a few hundred dollars at least to transfer everything over. And we do that as a thank you for being a customer of ours. Um, so if you go to like Levi marketing or just, you know, Google me pretty much, I'm all over Google. Um, then we can set that up for you and get you uh, set up to get everything transferred over you know, and get you all set up correctly. So you don't have to worry about setting up emails or domains or pointing things correctly. We, we do all the heavy lifting for you. Cool. 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 Very, very any cool. other place for people to connect with you? Where is, is there any other places? I'm to on LinkedIn, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, pretty much, you know, I, my daily operations tend to be in Levi marketing.com still. So if you contact me there, usually within, you know, within the hour, I'm going to call you back. So uh, if not pretty instant, but yeah, so that's usually the, the quickest way to get a hold of me. And uh, usually my secretary can route right to me, but yeah, that's typically it. Or you can just email me at any time The I'll give you one of my direct emails if that's okay. Sure. Uh, it's real simple. If you email me at domains, D O M A I N S at Levi, L E V I marketing.co, just .co or .com works too, but .co, that will go straight to me. So that's one of the quickest or easiest ways to get a hold of me too. Awesome. With yeah. the, I got a, I got an interesting thought here because you sure. mentioned .co and we've been beating <laughs> the that. ground for so long that it has to be a .com. <laughs> when are all these bazillion top level domains that they've released over the past couple, three years, when are people going to stop being so fixated on the dot com and expand into these others? Well, the reason why it's so important to, with the dot com, as I'm sure maybe you know already, is that uh, it's for SEO purposes. Google takes special preference, it just always has been, to the dot com. And honestly, the only reason I'm a dot co is because that's the only thing that was available at first. Uh, the, and then it wasn't until, you know, a few years ago that I was able to acquire the dot com, which is the reason why I just stuck with it because I had built up all that SEO for almost 10 years. Uh, um, but if dot com just simply forwards to the dot co now, uh, I think when I bought the dot com, I updated to that and uh, my SEO rankings pretty much dropped. And so I s switched it back to dot co. So I got lucky there. But um, but yeah, you know, you have the dot X, Y, Z, you have the dot space, you have the, you know, there's yeah, over, I'm, a do I'm a domain broker. So I see this all day long. You know, I buy and sell domains every day. And, um, you know, so there's all these extensions and they're more for, honestly, in my personal view, they're more for vanity purposes or to try to get in touch with people that, um, you know, to make it easy, the, the purpose of a website name in itself is to, to easily and quickly remember, remember like Google or Facebook or any of these ones, Twitter, you know, it's easy to remember. It's quick and easy. You don't have to remember like a full sentence or something like that. Um, and a lot of them are already taken with the dot com. So mm -hmm. if you're not hyper focused on the SEO aspect of it, like, okay, I don't have to have a dot com or if I have a dot com, you know, I can have another domain that will just automatically redirect or something. Uh, you know, that's really the only purpose in my mind to have one of those other extensions is so that if you want that like hyper-focused 
um, like one word or you know two word type of domain names, but it's not available in the .com. That's the only time I would get like an a uh, one I called a vanity type of extension. So like a exactly. .co or whatever yep. it is. Yeah. But typically, I would never recommend that to a new client. I mean, you really want to focus on the .com and get it as short as possible and as easy as possible. You mm -hmm. know. So. Yeah. Well, that kind of leads right into where you can find us with our group. So this is kind of how we end. So we talked about where we can find you. Uh, we actually uh, forward ours, businessgrowthtime.xyz. So we have one of those. Oh, nice. And that goes to our Facebook group. So that it's just a simpler way to get to that group. And then uh, you can also watch all of our past episodes. This one will be number 104. 104, so we have a lot of past episodes, and you can find those at businessgrowthtime.com uh, backslash podcast, and we have a slew of them. So go ahead and um, join us on the group. We'd love to have you join us, and you too, Kent. And then uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate you coming on. And yeah, thank you, you for know, having me. Never had a website talk before, so this is, this is new to us, and I think it will be great for our audience. Awesome. Well, I'm always here if you need, have any questions or need anything. Great. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ken. Yeah, Great thanks for having me.